What's going on guys, John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to finish our tic-tac-toe game for PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to go ahead and finish our game here. So we've got it set up so far that we could sort of play, and now we want to build in some logic to determine whether or not somebody's won or not. And you can see once we've won, the whole board is frozen, I can't play anymore. It says X wins, we can start over, do the same thing. Uh, da, 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 o wins and all the good things. We also want probably diagonal and we'll build that in too. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the sublime text editor and then get bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other PyQt5 videos. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our toe.py file. This is the stuff we built in the last video. If you didn't see that, check the playlist. We build out the GUI for it basically. And now we want to think about how do we want to build out the logic to determine whether or not we win? Well, tic-tac-toe is a pretty simple game. If you get three X's or O's in a row going side to side, up and down or diagonal, you win. So we can build some basic logic to do that. So let's come down here and let's create a couple of functions here. So the first one will be check win. And we want to pass in self. And this will check to see if anybody has won at any given time. We also want another one just called win. And here we want to pass in self and three other options too. So I'm just going to call them A, B, and C. So we know in order to win, you have to have three in a row of something. So whenever we check to see if there's three in a, in a row, if there are, we want to pass those three into this function and then do whatever we want to do when somebody wins. And we'll look at that in a second. So this check win function, we want to call it anytime somebody clicks a button. So if somebody clicks a button, puts an X or an O in a button in a space, we want to then check to see, hey, did they just win or not? So this here, our clicker function is where things happen when we click a button. So down here, let's just say check if one, and I'm just going to call self dot check win, and that will work. So now anytime we click a button, this function will get called and run. Okay, so now I'm going to head back over to our terminal real quick and open the designer just because I'm not real clear what the buttons are called and which button is which place. And we're going to need to know that. So I'm going to head over here and I'm in my C PyQt5 directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on and let's just run the designer real quick. And let's close this and let's open up our UI file that we made in the last video. So navigate to our, your C PyQt5 directory and that was toe.ui, I believe. Yep, there it is. So here we see our basic layout. And if we click on one of these, we can see over here, this is push button one, this is push button four, this is push button seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm gonna refer back to this as we build out this logic so that I don't get confused on which button is which. So this top row here is one, four, and seven. So let's run some logic to see if these three have the same X or O in them, that'll be a winning hand, right? So one, four, and seven, remember that. I'm probably gonna forget between now and then, the next five seconds or so. So let's check to see uh, a cross. So a cross is gonna be this, this, or this, right? So one, four, seven, remember that. So let's run an if statement. Let's say first, if self.button1.text, and the first thing we need to make sure is if there's something in the button, right? Because as of right now, when the game starts, these are all equal, they're all equally zero. So our logic might get confused and say, well, this, this, and this are equal, nothing. Therefore, somebody wins. Like, so we need to make sure that there's not nothing. So I'm gonna go if this, and we can just run the Python for not, not equal to, and then I'm just gonna put, you know, double quotes of nothing. So first, if the button is not empty, and if self.button1.text, and dot text is how we determine what's on the button, what, what text is there? Is there an X or is there an O? So that will tell us that. So let's say if button one equals self.button4.text, did we say button four? See, I forgot already. So one, four, and seven, right? So if this equals this, and this equals this, then they're all the same, right? So that's basically what we're doing here. So then we can also go and self dot button one dot text equals self dot 
button seven dot text, we want to do something, right? So what do we want to do? Well, we want to call that win function right here. So let's just call it self dot win. And we want to pass in each of these buttons into that self dot win function and then do something, right? So that would be self dot button one, self dot button four, and self dot button seven, right? So if all three of these are the same, pass them into this win function. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now, what do we want to do down here in the win function? Well, remember down here we have this label. So let's, uh, first thing, let's change that label to wins. Now, who wins though? Well, let's create an F string and pass in whatever the text is to any of these buttons. So since they're all equal, they're all the same thing. So any of them, we could take the text on them and that's who's one. So let's just go a dot text and let's put a space there. Okay, so that will change the label. And we might also want to change the color of these buttons to some other color to sort of make them stand out. In our case, I want to make them all red. I think that'll look good. So we could do that by calling the button itself a dot set style sheet. And this is a Q push button. And we want to change the color. So we can go color and then let's say red. And there we go. So that looks good there. So let's do it for each of the other buttons too, B and C. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good for now. Let's say uh, change the button colors to red. And let's say here, add win winner label. I don't know, something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it just to see if that worked. But before we do that, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships with all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, let's run this guy. So python toe.py. When we do, we can click here, click there, and click there, and boom, that works. Cool. Now we can keep clicking things, which is probably not what we want. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick before we do the rest of the logic. Let's come down here and let's say disable the board. And let's call a function self.disable. And let's go ahead and now create this. So let's say disable the board. And let's define disable. We want to pass in self. And down here where we, let's see, reset the board, we're going to use the same exact code for that. So let's come down here and let's just copy this. And let's come up here and paste that in. But instead of enabling true, we want to enable false. And we don't want to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it, make sure that worked. So let's run this guy again. So let's go boom, 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 boom. All these are red, and now the rest of these are disabled. Okay, when we click this to start over, and then click one of these, that's still red. So when we start over, we need to change the color back to the original color. So we can do that real quick. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna grab this. And let's come down to our reset function. And here where we're resetting the buttons, let's go reset the button colors. And this will be B. Now, what color do we want here? I'm not sure the exact color of buttons in PyQt5 button text, but I think it's something like 797979. So yeah, I think that'll work. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. Make sure that worked. Okay, so boom, boom, boom. We got red, we start over. Okay, they go back to the normal color. Okay, so far so good. We're basically done now. We just need to write the logic for the rest of the possible wins, right? So let's come over here and let's run this one more time and look at this. So we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible winning positions, right? So we just have to write if statements for all of them. And this is a little bit tedious, right? This is going to be the most boring part of this video. 
but it's not too bad. Let's go. We can just two, three, and then here, let's go down one, two, three. And here, let's go diagonal. How do you spell diagonal? One, two. All right. So let's do the diagonal first because there's only two. And I'm going to go back to designer. And this is going to be, let's see, push button one, five, and nine. So let's knock that out real quick. I'm just going to go right here one, five, and nine. And then if button one is nothing, then button one is equal to button five and button one is equal to button nine. So, okay, that one was easy. Look back over here again. So next is, let's see, three, five, and seven. So on this one down here, let's go three, five, and seven. So here, if three equals nothing, then three should be equal to five and three, should be equal to seven, already done for us. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that worked. Because you know, otherwise this is too tedious. Let's have some fun. So X, uh, O, X, all right, that works. Now we could go this way, that works. Let's try with O. Okay, that works too. And we can see here it says O wins down here. All right, so we've got our diagonals, we've got this one, now we just need one, two, three, four, five more of these things. So let's come back here and let's just knock these out. So the next one is gonna be this, this, and this. So that's two, five, and eight. So right here, I'm gonna go two, five, and eight. And up here, we want two, and <laughs> we want two, equals five and two equals eight. Okay, the next one is three, six, and nine. These are the hardest ones this across. So uh, let's go three, six, and nine. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second by the hardest one. So three equals three, equals six and three equals nine. Okay, so we've got all of our cross ones. Now we just need the down ones and the down ones are easy because it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So one, two, three is first. Let's knock this out. One, two, three. So if one equals one equals two and one equals three. All right, that looks good. This one is just four, five, and six. So here we have four equals four equals five and four equals six, okay. And this last one is just seven, eight, and nine. So we go seven equals seven equals eight, and almost done, seven equals nine. Okay. So you can see the reason why I'm calling self.win for this instead of just putting whatever we want right here is because this is all the stuff we want to happen every time we win. And we could put all of this stuff under each of these if statements, but I don't know. I think it's just cleaner to do it this way. It's definitely less code. Also, I'm using a bunch of if statements. You could also do an LF type deal instead, but I don't know, it's kind of the same thing at this point. So I just did it as if statements. So, all right, let's go ahead and run this guy and see if that worked. Play some tic tac toe. So uh, we already know this one works. So then that one works. Let's see. 
That one works. All right, so let's go this one. That one works. This one, middle one works. That one works. And we already know the diagonals work. So let's try uh, with O. There we go. And that seems to work too. Cool. And every time we get a winner, it says, you know, O wins here. If we want X, X wins there. And we're good to go. So pretty simple logic. And I mean, there's probably a zillion ways you could do logic for tic-tac-toe. I spent about two minutes thinking about this and this is what I came up with. So there may very well be a more elegant way to do it, but I don't know, this seems to get the job done. And yeah, this is kind of a lot of code right here, but you know, not that much. And then we've got our, what we, what we want to do when we win. And that's really kind of all there is to it. So I'll post this code on the GitHub thing. The link will be in the pinned comment section below because I know this is a lot here and I kind of went through this fast. If you just want to look at the code, it'll be there. But uh, yeah, all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 for all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.